Hi everyone, I'm Carmen from New Leaf Designs and I'm here with some more tips for your color work knitting. So uh, we are doing the Sassenach knit along right now, the Scapius knit along of 2022 and we are knitting two color work cushions and one of the questions that I'm hearing a lot is uh, my edges of the cushion are not looking so neat and some people are asking I have one edge of the cushion or one edge of my project that is neater than the other. Uh, one is looking fine and the other one is looking a little bumpy and in this video I am going to give you some more tips for that. Um, I have been teaching workshops the past couple of weeks and this is my uh, workshop project and I make a new one for each workshop and this one is not blocked yet and on this one you can really see um, that this edge is pretty neat and the other edge is a little bumpy you see that so even I have bumpy edges um, and this is a swatch or a project that I have blocked and you can see you can still see that this side is a little bumpy but um, overall I'm really really pleased with this and yeah you can see it here on my swatch too um, yeah but today we are going to look into how you can neaten up those edges of your color work and I have three tips for you. And the first one is to catch floats um, at your edges. And I am going to show you on a project that I have here. Um, and <laughs> this edge is looking very bumpy because I am switching colors a lot and there are some larger stitches. I'm not sure if it will focus, but it's not looking super neat. Um, so the the edge where you uh, join new colors or you know the start of a new round that is often not as neat as the halfway point of the round where you are not um, changing colors, but you're changing from one side to the other. So um, in this video I'm not going to show you how to wrap floats because I go into that in my tips and tricks video and um, yeah since one of my um, yarns is cut off here um, I'm not really in a great position to show you right now but I do want to show you that you know, uh, when you go from one needle to the other, if both your yarn colors are at the edge, like here, in this case you don't need to wrap it because both yarns are here. Um, let me see if I'm in a different spot on another swatch. No, I'm not. Um, but let's say if um, my last pattern color stitch was here, then this thread would be hanging somewhere here. And if you don't catch those floats, if they kind of, um, if you just continue to the other side and then you just pull and it might close off a little bit of that side. Um, it might also just pucker the edges of your swatch, um, making it making a little dent there. So to remedy that, you can wrap your floats. And um, so if at the edge, maybe you have three or four stitches uh, at the end of the round with just the background color or just the pattern color and the first few stitches um, are also just in that one color, um, then it is really a good idea to wrap the unused color. And I advise doing that on the 
second to last stitch so not the last stitch but the stitch before that um, or and or the second stitch of the new round so um, for beginners I advise to do it to wrap your floats in both places so the second to last stitch and the second stitch of the um, new round um, I'm now comfortable with just wrapping it in one of those two places and that has a reason I'm not just omitting it because I don't feel like it uh, although sometimes you know wrapping floats <laughs> It's tedious, but um, it has a reason because if you're wrapping floats and let's say you have a couple of rounds where uh, where you want to wrap floats in kind of the same area, then you want to avoid wrapping floats on the same stitch. So you want to avoid wrapping floats in the same stitch column um, because that can pull that float to the surface because um, the fabric kind of reacts to where it's pulled. So, um, and whenever you're wrapping a float, the, stitch, the stitches in front of that are kind of curving to, I don't know, they, they just do. Um, so if, if you're uh, wrapping floats in the same column of stitches, um, round after round um, that will make the floats show up. So what I now do is if I have um, an area uh, where I want to wrap floats, um, say it is the second stitch and the third stitch, um, so the the one round I'll wrap it on the second stitch and the next round I'll wrap it on the third stitch so that you know even just one stitch if you offset it that kind of helps. Um, and for the edges, uh, if you're more comfortable with wrapping floats and more comfortable with your tension, you can wrap it on the second stitch of a round. Um, and then the next time when you come to that edge, you wrap it on the second to last stitch of that side. So, so that it's not wrapped um, in the same column of stitches. So that is one way to keep your edges really neat. Second way is um, to make sure that you avoid ladders uh, forming at the edges. And working on in the round um, on a project that is smaller than your needles, uh, so your project is shorter than the length of your needles, uh, you will have to pay attention to that. So it doesn't matter whether you're using two, uh, one circular like this or you have it on two circulars, um, you're going to want to make sure that the, the cable doesn't pull apart uh, when you're starting a new side because then um, a ladder might might form there. So what I advise is to, uh, and I, po I apologize for not showing this across the shoulder like this, um, I also briefly showed this in the tips and tricks video, is that when you um, start a next round, whether you know, you're using two circular needles or whether you're using one circular needle, make sure that you take the back cable and hold it to your first stitch so that when you go to knit it, see now it's pretty far apart. And if I were to knit it like this, then you know, sometimes you would reach across quite a gap with your needles and uh, I mean with your yarn and if you bring that cable to the stitch you're knitting um, you're kind of bridging the gap and um, you're making sure that the yarn doesn't have to cross this whole distance and another way you can do this if it is uh, maybe too difficult to manage it 
uh, with your hands because, you know, <laughs> I know I'm not the only one who wished we had more than just two hands when knitting because sometimes it just seems like you have to hold too many things at once. So if, if you don't want to pay attention to holding um, the cable, you can also use these kind of quilting clips. Um, I use them with sewing, but sometimes I also use them to keep the edges of my work in place. So I would just put a clip on it like that, and it will be a little bit more tricky to knit it because you only have limited space because, you know, that's the purpose of the clip. Um, so you'll have to kind of wiggle your way around the clip, but it will um, it will help you um, close that gap at the sides, so that even if you forget to to hold your cable to the front, that clip will help you. And of course, you'll have to move it upwards as you go along. So that's another tip to, um, to keep your edges um, clean and neat, is to avoid the ladders. And then the third tip is to neaten up your edge while weaving in ends. And for this, I will show you how to do that because um, I did not show you that in the tips and tricks video. So here I have a lot of ends and I actually don't mind weaving in ends. So, um, but for each color that you use, you have a beginning end, a beginning thread and a end end. <laughs> So it's from when you join the color and when you cut the color. Um, and you will see, well, now it's kind of jumbled. And you will see that you can kind of divide the ends in two from where you've joined it um, and where you've cut them. And it is important to weave in those ends the opposite way. Um, and let me just grab something to kind of help you visualize this. Um, so if you want to imagine a stitch, a knit stitch, um, viewed from the right side as kind of this loop. And, you know, here it's going to the next stitch and so forth. Um, and when you have a stitch and you weave, let's say this is the end, and you weave it in this way, that will kind of distort the stitch and also it might leave a gap here. Uh, so at the size of your work, you want to pay attention that if, you, if this is the end, that you weave it in this way so that the shape is intact and also that it closes any gaps on the side. So now let's take my over-the-shoulder camera and I'm going to show you how to weave in a couple ends. All right, so I am going to be weaving in this yellow end and this white one. And these if you'll um, see the bright side, they are both the background color. And the yellow one finishes here, and then the white one begins. So they have to be sewn in, in opposite directions. And the first thing you want to do when weaving in an end is, because I saw that the yellow one was a little bigger, but if I tug on the end, see that stitch gets smaller, but it's this stitch that I want to um, uh, modify a little. So I'll just tug that, and then I'll tug the right leg of this one. 
see because it, the yarn goes from right to left so it goes up here and then down here and up here and then down here and then if I took the end there so you want to make sure that your stitches are all kind of the same size so and here you can see this stitch is pulled really large and this one is too so if I go to weave in those ends I want to make sure to get those at the same size so I have um, fixed any size differences on the right side that's when I move to the wrong side and so there's a lot of ends here so I'm sorry if this is confusing but I'll just take the yellow one first and see that there is a gap between them so I want to weave in the yellow one in this direction and the white one in this direction so I close that gap and the actual weaving in end I'm you know it's it's very simple um, but one thing that I always try to do is that I don't go through uh, entire stitches I want to kind of pierce the middle of the yarn so so usually I'm just going through the top layer of some stitches see I'm not really going under them I'm going through them and the reason for this is that if you go uh, under them it might show up on the right side so I'm just going through them and then back once and back another time so you kind of you have two corners two bends in your um, sewing and then you just snip the end and that's it apologies for my table here <laughs> I, uh, I was coloring in the uh, coloring chart in fact for the um, knit along and I was using some very persistent coloring pens that wanted to color my table as well um, so now I, now I'm just doing that with the white one as well and I'm going to weave it in on the left hand side and I'm actually going up and also I'm just piercing through the middle of the stitches and there and that's done so yeah there's not much more to say it's really simple um, it's just you know there's a lot of ends so it might get tedious but um, I really don't mind uh, so that is how I weave in ends so those are the three pieces of advice I can give you so make sure you catch your floats at the edges um, make sure you don't leave any ladders and um, make sure you weave your ends in in the opposite direction and that will make your ends make your you know the sides look much neater so I hope you enjoyed those extra tips and tricks and be sure to keep sharing your progress photos of the Scapies Cal. I love to see them, so use the hashtags Scapies Cal 2022 and Sassenach Cal. And you can post them on Instagram and on Facebook in the Scapies Facebook groups, for example, or in my own Facebook group, the New Leaf Designs Knitting and Crochet Crew. All right, thank you so much for watching and happy knitting. Bye bye.